So now let's go ahead and start building our checker. And uh, this is uh, this script is going to get loaded into pretty much any page that we want to check. And so the page that we loaded into is going to have JavaScript already and styles already. So we want to minimize the chances that there's going to be any conflict from loading this between our script and what's already there. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically only have one exposed function, only this check document WCAG and I guess it's WCAG loaded is going to are going to be exposed. And we don't even really need this. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of that because we don't need it. Um, I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to say loaded is equal to check document WCAG. So now if this is defined as a function, then loaded is going to be not false anymore. And I'm going to go ahead and edit that and replace and reload. And it should do the same thing as, as it was doing before. So that's all working the same. And then if we look at the elements in the head, we still only have the two at the end. So, so that's still working. And then the other thing that we're going to do in order to reduce the footprint is basically this is going to be pretty complicated. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to put everything inside of a closure. So all of the variables and all the functions that we define are going to be inside of a closure. So they're not going to be visible to the external world. And that way, if we happen to redefine a function that exists on a page that we're accessing, we'll only be redefining it inside of the closure and not affecting anything on the outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a variable check document WCAG equal to an anonymous function. And we'll just call this check document. And we're going to return this when the function is run. So when I run this function, it's going to return another function. And then that function that it returns, that's going to be my value of web of check document WCAG. So I'm going to call the function. So this whole thing here is going to return a function and, and bind it. And then when I run this, Everything else, this check document, is not going to be visible to the external world. So I'll go ahead and reload. And I'll go to console. So check document is undefined. Check document WCAG is undefined. I hit the button, I get my hello bookmarklet. And now check document WCAG is defined, but check document still not defined because it's only defined inside of my closure. So now anything that I add to my closure um, is not going to affect the outside world. So what am I going to add? Well, let me go over here and uh, search for WCAG color contrast. And I provided some bookmarks um, in the reading materials. Um, but let's go ahead and Start with WCAG contrast minimum 1.4.3. And this is for level AA. And here's the summary at the top. But basically, um, large images, I'm sorry, large text, which is 18 point or greater, or 14 point and bold or greater, have to have at least 3.1 contrast ratio. And then anything else that isn't incidental has to have at least 4.5 to 1. And then the actual formula for calculating color contrast let's try that. Add luminance. This G18, I think, will have it. Right, and here's the equation. Okay, so basically what happens is you get a, a red, green, blue 
where each of the red, green, and blue elements are between 0 and 255. Then you divide the red to get red sRGB. And then you execute this calculation here on each component, and that gives you uh, luminance. And that gives you a red value, a green value, and a blue value. And then you plug those values into this equation, and that gives you luminance. So you'll have the luminance for the foreground color and the luminance for the background color. Then you find whichever one is brightest, and you execute this one. And that's going to give you a contrast ratio. So this is what we want to check. If this is above 3.0, and the text is large, then we're OK. Or if it's above 4.5 and the text is not large, then we're OK. Otherwise, we have a problem. So the things that we need in order to do the calculation are going to be the foreground color, the background color, the text size, and the text weight, whether it's bold or not. So let's go ahead and start walking through our objects. And uh, just for just to get started, I'm going to call a function called check colors, and I'm going to pass it the document root. And then check colors is going to be a recursive function, and it's going to take a tag. And let's start by just outputting text. So if tag dot node type is equal equal node dot text element or text node then let's output it to the screen so this should produce all of the text in our document for the top level node and then what we want to do is walk through each of the children so I'm going to add a, ch a children variable. And children is equal to tag dot get child tag dot child nodes. And then create a variable i. Check the colors for children survive. So uh, just a couple of quick words. Um, you might notice that I'm writing my variables at the top instead of putting them in line. And that's because of uh, variable hoisting, which we um, basically this line here, if I wrote it this way, it's basically treated like Javas treated by JavaScript like these two lines. And then any variable declarations are automatically moved to the top, like so. So that's how JavaScript treats that. Um, but sometimes it can lead to confusion, so I'm going to declare all my variables at the top where JavaScript puts them anyhow. And that's called variable hoisting, when it moves the declaration part to the top but leaves the initializer in line. So this is the effect that you get. And same thing here. If I said var i equals 0, it would hoist the var i declaration to the top and then just leave the i equals 0 part down here. So let's go ahead and save that and uh, get the console. And if I hit this button, I should get all my text. So here's all the text on that page. Now, uh, we're interested both in the text of text nodes and also the label of element nodes. So I'm going to also include if peg.nodeType equal node.element node and peg.label 
not equal equal undefined, then I'm also going to console.log tag.label. So there's an example of that on the home page for PCC. And it's not obvious which one is which. So let's go ahead and uh, change our log message a little bit. Text colon plus and then label colon plus reload and run. So control F for label and we see this quick links get started new student checklist and so on. If I click on here we'll see get started student essentials new student checklist admissions so these things here are actually labels and if I right click and inspect element inside the selection box you'll see opt group label get started and then it has a bunch of options under it. So now we're going to check both the labels and the texts.